Calculus is the study of functions and their behavior. Nothing about calculus will make any sense without a solid foundational concept of a function. The second week of the class is devoted to building that concept. Much of this will be review for many of you, depending on your high school mathematics background. For others, this may be quite new. So what is a function? I'm going to give three answers, three concepts, three ideas to really understand what a function is and what it does. First, a function is a machine, a process, an action. It takes a thing, for us usually a number, and does something to it. Consider the function f of x equals x squared. What this function does is it squares numbers. It has an input and an output. For the input 2, it outputs 4, since 4 is the square of 2. For the input 3, it outputs 9, since 3 squared is 9. For the input negative 1, it outputs positive 1, since negative 1 squared is positive 1. And for the input 1 5, it outputs 1 over 25, since 1 fifth times 1 fifth is 1 25th. This is the first concept, the function as machine. This is perhaps the most concrete of the interpretations. I have an idea of a machine, and I can imagine this abstract function as a thing like a concrete machine, even though it acts on funny abstract things like numbers. This interpretation is a bit fuzzy, a bit informal. Mathematicians like to formalize things, to write down very clear rules and definitions. The second interpretation of a function is the formal, abstract, mathematical definition. It starts with sets. A set, very briefly, is simply a collection of things, for our purpose, a collection of numbers. I hope the idea of a set is a little familiar to you from your high school mathematics. However, let me clarify a few very important pieces of notation. A set is a collection of things. To write it explicitly, I use braces and comma. Since it is a collection, I need to indicate when something is in a set, when it is an element of the set. I indicate elements using this E-like symbol. If I put a cross through it, I can indicate that something is not an element. The set A consists of four numbers explicitly defined. I can see that 10 is in there, so 10 is an element. I can also see that 8 is not in there, so 8 is not an element. There are symbols for the most common sets of numbers. I'll use these frequently, so let me show you these symbols. This stylized n is the symbol for the natural numbers, the positive whole numbers. 3 is a natural number, so I can write that 3 is an element of n. This stylized z is the symbol for the integers, positive and negative whole numbers. Now I can include negatives, so negative 16 is an element of the integers. This stylized q is the rational numbers, the fractions. 1 over 17 is an element of q, and finally, this stylized R is the real numbers, the rationals and the irrationals. Irrational numbers, numbers which cannot be written as fractions, such as pi, are elements of the real numbers. Now that I've done the briefest of reviews of sets, let me give you the next idea of a function. Start with two sets, A and B. A function is a logical rule that takes things in one set and sends them to the other set. I write this with an arrow, and I say that the function f goes from the set A to the set B. Each element A in the first set is set to some, el some element written f of A in the second set. This concept takes the machine or process from the first concept and gives mathematical clarity, saying that the machine or the process has a starting point, the set A, and an ending point, the set B. Finally, let me discuss the third concept for a function. I know a function is a machine, and mathematically it sends numbers from one set to numbers in another set. By doing so, the function encodes a relationship between the two sets, a dependence. The elements in the second set now depend on the first set. Consider an animal population. If A is the number that measures the food supply, and B is the number that measures the population, then a function f from a to b measures the effect of the food supply on the population. The population depends on the food supply and, presumably, more food will lead to more popul population growth and therefore more animals. There is a dependency between two quantities, the population 
and the food. A function describes that dependency. These are the three main ideas behind a function, a machine, a rule, and a dependency. Before finishing this video, I want to cover two other basic ideas for a function. To visualize a function, I can draw its graph. A graph is a picture that shows both the input and the output of a function. The input comes from the x-axis and the output is assigned to the y-axis. For any point on the function, say this point, I can draw a vertical line down to the x-axis. That point is the input. And then I can draw a horizontal line to the y-axis. That point is the output. Each point on this graph represents one input and one output, and altogether, the graph gives us a very nice way of visualizing the action of the function. For every input, a function only produces one output. That means that each input only has one point on the graph. From anywhere on the x-axis looking above and below, there is only one point I can find on the graph. You may know this as a vertical line test. If you draw a vertical line, it only crosses the graph of a function at most once. There are many shapes that can be drawn in the plane. Among those shapes, graphs of functions have to satisfy this vertical line test. 